Welcome back to Talking Shop. As you can see, this is not our normal shop. We are not in Bullhead the, City. Yeah, we are not in Bullhead City. We are in You don't beautiful, have the usual people. Either. That's right, we don't have usual people. We are in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada at the tail end of a conference, right, on preaching. Uh, we are here at Faith Community in beautiful summer. It's nice in this part of town. Uh, and we're here, and of course, I'm Tim. I'm always here. Um, almost always is Adam. He's always here. We got Paul Koch. You might know him from around from the Gospel of Society. Yes, right. That's right. right. It's good to have Paul here. We got Bob Hiller, uh, who is old school. Old, old school, school, right? He's OG on these. Yeah, yeah it's, right. uh, he, he's he's. Uh, it's great to have you guys with us. We're gonna have a uh, discussion on this proper fourteen Ephesians four uh, seventeen to five two, and just talking about the contrast in there, right? As we go through it. So, hey, let's get to it. Spit out my Lord in every way, yet I'm still welcome in the yard. Hey, we're in Ephesians 4, 17 to 5, 2, so it crosses over. As usual, the pericope system is all over the place, but we're, we're going to work with it anyways. Uh, you know, I, I, which I always get to make fun of the Pericope system. Yeah. Uh, and this is proper 14 in this season of Series B. It's Pentecost 12. Sometimes it's 11, sometimes 13, depending on how many Sundays are after Easter and all of that. Uh, but yeah, so here we are in proper 14. Let's get to it. Uh, verse 17. Now this I say... And testify to the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. What's he doing? Where, I mean, because where, where's he going with this, right? How does, this, how does this fit? Well, he's just talked about, so Paul starts the chapter off talking about the unity we have in Christ. Uh, there's one faith, one hope, one Lord, one baptism, one God. And then he talks about the... Um, the role of the clergy to kind of uh, 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 train up people for, for living out their faith. And now he's saying, and that life is going to look markedly different from the rest of the world around you. At least it ought to. You, you guys. What your life was like before. Yeah, yeah. right. And it, it shouldn't right. look like what it used to be. So that's what he's doing. Yeah, well, and, and this whole diet, like he even brings up Gentiles per se. It's all this language of outsiders versus insiders. Right. Hmm. Right, those those who are not of us versus us. Uh, verse eighteen: They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. Um, I think as you, as you're preaching this, as you're thinking about it, you could always think of that hardness of heart piece. Right, we we all struggle with with the hardness of heart. Uh, pastors as well as parishioners but I mean what what does that look like for you guys as, as you preach that because that's going to look different in every place right it's going to look different Heart, hardness of heart is going to look slightly different in California than it is in Arizona than it is in Nevada that sort of thing uh, what, what do you guys think as you as you read through that I, I do think there so if you read the next verse also they became callous and have given themselves up to sensuality greedy uh, to ever Greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That's an incredible type of greed. Um, <laughs> but what, what you see here is I don't think he's doing this move where you say, well, they have hardness of heart, but we all really have hardness of heart, don't we? Like he's saying there are those who are outside of the faith who are, who are opposed to the gospel message that we preach, and it plays itself out, and they're their disobedience to the first commandment and then the rest of this way the rest of the way through like they, they're just they live in opposition to God so it's not a matter of which I do think we'll see here this wrestling match between the old and the new nature he's right. saying here you are not those people who are opposed to the gospel who are opposed to yeah. the God of their creation he's sort of established on the foundation yeah as he built yeah it out. yeah yeah good and this is and this is where he goes in verse twenty, right? But that is not the way. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah. the word where we have in the ESV is learned. The, the word is, is mathetes, right? It's this is not how you were discipled yeah. uh, into Jesus, uh, which is kind of a really good point. That's how we all 
quote unquote find our way yeah to, yeah to, to in in christ is is a discipling action discipled by whether it's a parent or a grandparent or discipled by other mm. brothers in christ yeah. whatever it might be um but that's not it and then and then it's so cool kind of at 21 because he, he makes that a, a he, he brings the assumption of uh, assuming that you have heard <laughs> about him and were taught in him as the truth in Jesus. Uh, assuming, assuming you were taught right. Right. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> assuming you had, you had good discipling, uh, to put off your old self, verse 22, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I'm just going to read all the way through 24. And to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Um, you know, if you're preaching this, this would kind of be the heart of your sermon. If you wanted to, you wouldn't have to go there with it. Um, but this could yeah. be the, the, the kind of the cornerstone piece. What, what are you thinking as you read it? Nothing, nothing in it. Well, just sitting and staring at Mike. I think <laughs> one of the things that is always a danger with a text like this is to, because Paul is saying there's an us versus them, and, it, and it, when you preach that way, it can lend itself to a self-righteousness that I don't think Paul will actually allow for here because he does say, you used to walk in that life. So it, it actually, the way you preach this ought to produce a, a form of empathy towards the person who is who is outside who does have the callous heart who doesn't know christ or doesn't right, right. accept christ or however you want to word it like that's where you used to be you're not there anymore you don't need to act like you're still over there um but you also don't have to and you shouldn't be walking in the way you used to walk but that doesn't mean you can sit back and like don't turn this into a judgmental text turn it more into like you could very easily slip back into where you were before it's again it's like a remember who you are. Yeah, that's right. Think, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, uh, it's kind of a rallying yeah. sense. Yeah. You know, um this this new thing that you are, put that on, wear that, right? Um uh this new gift of yours. It's also really easy to say, <clears throat> Yeah, I used to be like that, but I cleaned up my act. <laughs> and I'm better now. Right. Right. Sure, so sure. so it's still even uh the other side of don't be judgmental. It's also really easy to be self-righteous. Yeah, I remember when I used to be this dirty, rotten sinner, but now I've cleaned my own right. life up, right. and I'm awesome now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, I also think of, right, that uh, our whole lives are lives of repentance. Well, in that, that self-righteousness there, that is the old way of life. Like, that is the yeah, old mentality. Right. It's, it's right. very self-focused, self-serving, and, and that's a, the very thing Paul's calling you away from. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's where he's going to go in the second half of this prick. Yeah. Because that's, if, I mean, if you want to split it in half, that's kind of the first half. That's kind of the first piece. And then he chunks into the second piece with the therefore, right? And especially in, in the, the New Testament stuff, we, we come across this therefore all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially with Paul, you know, he, he, so what's it there for him? We always joke about that. But therefore, having put away falsehood, uh, and that being the falsehood, right? Let mm -hmm. each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Um, the truth being mm -hmm. Jesus. Yep. The truth being uh, you are still, what, saint and sinner yep. at the same time. Uh, other the, the truth that you were discipled in, right? Whatever that might be. Uh, in this, for we are members one of another. Uh, you have a responsibility, yeah, to your neighbor for this. <laughs> right. It's, it's not just well, me and God are good. Yeah. Right. Screw the rest of y'all. Yeah. Right. It's, right. So the, we're going to speak the truth because. I have a responsibility mm -hmm. to my neighbor for this. So, so we get, put away the falsehood. Yeah. So when you talk about it that way, it makes me think a lot of communion, like because we come up to communion and it's this very individual thing, but it's also a very communal thing, right? As we right. kneel down, we're saying we all confess the same thing, right? Or we all believe the same thing. And so, it, yeah, it is me and God, but it's not or, just, yeah, or maybe even more here, not just that we believe the same thing, but my, 
I have a duty to this person yeah. and a, an obligation of love for them, right? Um, that, that there's, uh, it's not just we're in this together, we're actually for each other mm -hmm. right? as well. Mm -hmm. And I, well, I think we'll get uh, to that in a couple more verses, but kind of there is this polarity of uh, this, right, this greedy practice of every kind of, of this impurity, of this self-righteousness being focused on ourselves and our selfishness. Mm. But this truth that we have in Christ points us outside of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, good. And, and as I read the next section, we're going to go through it, it always makes me think of like bad church meetings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where, where we forget, right, that we're, we're all on the same side. We're all moving in yeah, the same yeah, direction. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, let's talk about it. Verse 26, be angry and do not sin. Oh, you just got permission to be angry, Paul. How do you like that? Uh, be angry and do not sin. <laughs> but what if... Yeah. <laughs> do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not sin parts hard. Yes. Unless they deserve it. Yeah, unless they deserve <laughs> it, right. And this idea of do not let the sun go down. I hear a lot of married couples take, you know, they, yeah, they sure, use this sure. a lot, right? Yeah. Because that's a super close relationship. It's like we're not going to sleep until we at least hash this out a little bit. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's a community of faith idea as well. Verse 27, and give no opportunity to the devil. Uh, what's that? I think, I mean, what's, what's the devil's job to accuse to, to destroy that which God has created. So when you, when you think yeah. of the garden, uh, we always go back to the garden, but when you think of the garden, uh, Satan comes in and he separates that which was united and he turns it against each other. So here, again, this is Paul saying, don't go back to the, the former way of fallen creation because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So uh, live out that reality by giving no opportunity for the devil when you sit on your anger and you stew against someone else, it, it becomes bitterness and accusation towards them in your own heart and then on your own lips and then within the community. So deal with it quick. Go uh, Matthew 18 style, right? Like you, you go and you right. speak with them and right. you work towards reconciliation and healing. Yeah. Um, whereas the devil would be fine if you just stew with your bitterness towards each other. Yeah. Um, and sleeping under the rug. Yeah. Well, and, and we just finished a conference on on art and you know that sort of thing it'd be really easy to kind of have that light dark juxtaposition yeah. thing you would know, be pretty yeah. easy to find an art piece that that kind of juxtaposed the the separation mm -hmm. with with the the being brought together yeah. um I'm, I'm thinking of actually uh there's that one piece where adam and eve are are in the garden and they're standing around the tree and and everything looks good and then on the other side they're being kicked out of the garden by the angel yeah. and and their oh, their, yeah. their, their countenance has yeah. fallen yeah. and everything else I, what's yeah. that one called i forget what it's, it's called. a law and gospel i think by yeah. you as an albert doer yeah durer that's right yeah. and and they're they're they look totally different right and you could maybe even use that juxtaposition in there as well uh, uh it, so in my community we have this really awesome drug court program so people that are struggling with substance abuse Instead of going to prison, an awesome drug. <laughs> <laughs> but the drug court is a legitimate, serious attempt to try to help people get over their addiction or deal with their addiction in healthy ways. And instead of throwing people that are struggling with addiction in prison, it's hey, let's give you the tools and resources to deal with the addiction in a in a healthy way and to get past it. Right. So you you can either work a rehab program or you can go to prison, your choice, right? Yeah. And so the uh, municipal judge always says, show me your friends and I will show you your future. And so I, mm. I think of that when don't, uh, uh -oh. to not give an opportunity to the devil, right? Like yeah. if you play stupid games, you're yeah. gonna win stupid win prizes. Stupid. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Right, yeah, good. right? and like so. My dad always used to say, if you lie down with the dogs, you get up with the fleas, that sort of thing. Right, so, so if <laughs> all of your friend, friends are drug addicts, yeah, yeah. you're giving an opportunity <laughs> right. to the devil to tempt you, right. and you're going to fall back into but, your addiction. Yeah, Wh which I, is probably not gonna be, you know, Grandma Schmidt's problem in right. the pew. Right. But she's got other problems. Maybe but it's gossip, or right? Whatever if you is. hang yeah. out with a bunch of gossips, yeah, you're gonna find yourself gossiping. Yeah, but it, it is. It is insightful to the the overall nature of this part of you know Paul's letters in general, where he gets to this language of sort of the now. How do you live? Because there's still danger. Yeah, like there's yeah. still a cautionary aspect to this 
Um, and I think that's a good way to it, it sort of summarize it. Don't give opportunity to the devil. Cause <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? he's, he's at work, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, and, and so you kind of guard this good. Well, and then if you there's not a sense. Go ahead. No, no, yeah, if you want, you can always connect with like First Peter and the you know, devil's a prowling lion. Sure, you yeah, could make that. Right. You wouldn't even have to state it out loud, but you could just state the phrases. People are going to recognize that, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I was just going to say, sin doesn't become. How do I say this properly? Sin doesn't become neutralized. Like sin is still violation of God's will. It's still harmful to others and to you and it can it can wreck the system and it's the devil's will so like there's no point where we christians should look at sin and be like yeah it's not it's not a big no right like it is yeah, still harmful right uh and it's not something you don't you don't go back to slavery once you've been set free right. so right. the devil's trying to draw you back into a place where you well, don't want to be this in the is first why place. i'm sorry yeah this is why liturgically like we do the confession and forgiveness yep yep every six days yep. Right, just to remind you, you know, yeah. you're, you're not free from this issue, right? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. because we're always trying to be God ourselves, right? None of us can keep the first commandment, right? Let alone the other nine, yeah. right? Yeah. Because we want to be God, right? Right. Always, 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 always. Yeah, that's that's Calvin, right? We're the we're, not that we like Calvin that much, but he was right when we said our hearts are idol factories. Yeah. 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 Yeah, verse uh, verse twenty eight. Then he does this kind of this this example thing in here. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Right. And we talked about this when we were just kind of going through the text before we we turned on here. Uh, it's say what you said about it, Adam. It, it, I won't rephrase you, but that it is a right all of these things are an inward focus on yourself and that uh right a thief is selfish he's taking somebody else's stuff for himself right and this uh this truth in christ is uh turning that inside out instead of stealing other people's stuff let you go have an honest day's work and you have enough that you can share with other people so instead of taking your giving, giving yeah, and, and which is in the image of Christ right, exactly. being sacrificial of himself. Right. That's right. 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 And you could, you know, so in my stuff, like the generosity stuff, you could always argue that to uh, not give to others is actually stealing from them and from God. Right. Uh, because of that desire to give back, that desire to serve the way you have been served. Right. It's an assumption that that is your stuff. Right. None of it's your stuff. Right. It's all God's stuff. Right. You're just the manager. Right. Right. And so. So you could even make this stewardship Sunday. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, you, you could, though. You right. could certainly bring that piece in there uh, that no one does stewardship Sunday. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, right. Every Sunday. <laughs> Every Sunday is stewardship Sunday. That's right. That's right. Uh, good. Verse 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that make you grace to those who hear. Uh, Bob, you'd made the comment about how so much of this is about your stinking mouth. Yeah, the, the, but I think that's interesting for us to think about if the giving, if, if work for the sake of giving to your neighbor is a reflection of Christ, speaking words that give grace versus words that tear down also reflects the nature of God because he's a God whose word creates. It's, he speaks yeah. things into existence. He speaks faith into your heart. He speaks words of mercy and forgiveness. And uh, if we become what we worship, we're going to start speaking in a similar way. Our words are not going to reflect the old way of life where you got, you know, uh, presidential candidates arguing over who can hit you know, drive for <laughs> or something it. Like, it's like this. Like it's not just yeah. constant snippy and biting and, and right. gossip and slander. It's working towards forgiveness and reconciliation, uh, trying to achieve the unity you've already received in Christ, that kind of a thing. Yeah, good. Verse, uh, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. What is grieving the Holy Spirit of God? All right, what is, what is what is he doing right there? What's he, what's he trying to what's he trying to get at? Uh, I, you know, I, it seems to me like it kind of seems to be working like as a summary sort of thing, like to to like if you if you so if you back up to what was it twenty four, 
you, to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. I think that is being sealed by the Holy Spirit of God for the day of redemption. I mean, all this is, this is all heavy baptismal imagery for sure. Um, so to grieve the Holy Spirit, is, I think, is to work in opposition to the new self. It's to do, yeah. so sort of, you know, it's, it's a, a, yet again, it's just piling it on. Yeah. Like, don't act this way. Yeah. Well, I, 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 and I, I sometimes these, on these podcasts, yeah. I make fun of Adam for going to baptism, like, every week. Yes, every yeah. week. <laughs> every Ro- week. <laughs> Romans <laughs> 6. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good place to go. Uh, right. Yeah, it's not a bad place to go. But, but, but there's but this text, text Romans, right? Uh, yeah. At the end of yeah. Romans 5, yeah. right? Yeah. Shall we go on too, sitting? Or, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. The grace may abound. By no means, right? That that's what Romans six is about. Is right. should we continue to sin so that we get more grace? No, that's not who you are. Yeah. Right? That's not what you've been baptized into. You are baptized into Christ. And so you have this new life. Yeah. And that is, I think he's echoing that here. I mean, when my kids do something that they're not supposed to do, right? I'm disappointed. I'm sad. I'm grieved when my kids are not living up to hmm who they are supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing, right? right? Like when my kids know better and they do it anyway. Yeah. Right? And then they look at you while they do it. Right. Like right. I'm sad. I'm disappointed. I'm grieved. And, and, and we do that to God too, right? We do it in the whole while. Right. Know that he can see exactly where we are and what the intention of our heart is. Right. Yeah. He, he sees how I talk to my wife and how I talk yeah. to my kids and how, right? I lose my patience with them and I'm frustrated with them. It's like, I'm sure he's disappointed. Yeah. I'm sure I grieve him. Should probably not do that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the old, uh, it's the old yeah. video where well, the preacher gets up in the pulpit and he's like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> You're making me look bad in front of God, right? Yeah. You're yeah. the worst. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's Dan. He's the worst. <laughs> verse 31, and this is what verse 31 does, right? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you and along with all malice, right? So that's all of that yep. stuff, yeah. all that verbal junk. Uh, and then verse 32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving, as God in Christ forgave you. Which is, I, I think, very important that because you can really quickly moralize yes. all of this and move away from the fact that this this is the reality that you're growing into because forgiveness of sins is the air you breathe. So you forgive, yeah. but that's because God in Christ forgave you. And I, I'd have to look at the Greek to see how forgave is, if it's just a past tense verb there, if there's more to it. But it is the reality that uh, the biggest demarcation between the old life and the new life is the forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus. Right. So with the gospel of forgiveness guiding everything, not only giving you uh, reconciliation to God, but the new life itself, it's going to shape the way you conduct yourself in your conversation uh, and your affections towards other people. Yeah, the, the, great, the Greek uses the word taras, mm-hmm. how he graced you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah isn't it cool? Yeah, so it's, a, it's this grace of God that you've been given uh, first. Yeah, good. Five verse one, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. And this is that generosity piece. This is that mercy piece, right? Just what you were talking about, you received it first. And let's do verse two, and then we can come back to it. And walk in love uh, as Christ loved and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Yeah. Uh, so how I almost preach it? When I preach this text, I would almost start at the end. And I would say, like, because really that is the, that is, I, it's it's remarkable, Tim, how wonderful the lectionary put this together. Um, <laughs> but like how this this is the perfect summary of everything we just got. So you want to sort of point out this is what it means to walk in love, and then you could do like a compare and contrast kind of sermon, like the as opposed to this kind of language, love does this. As opposed to stealing, love works to give. As opposed to this, it does that. And we see this ultimately in Christ, who does these things for us, right? So. You almost want to start to have that being the guiding principle and the rest become kind of the filler for the sermon. Yeah. 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 yeah no, it's this a great way from the copo. No, I said that was good. Oh, actually, <laughs> I'm actually agreeing with you. You're agreeing with Bob. That. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, highly, that was good. I'm going to keep playing that <laughs> yeah. over and over. That's right. I, that's yeah. highly unusual. 
Anything else? Anything you got on this text? I mean, it, it, it's it's fun to be in this. You get, you do get that great contrast stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could use the the contrast, the dark and the light, mm -hmm. and, and you know, this is how you used to be. This is how you are now in Christ and that kind right. of thing. So you really get some great contrast in there that you could preach, which is really fish in the barrel stuff. <laughs> yeah, that there's so much that you can do with it that you're yeah. just gonna have to figure out what you're gonna do and dump the rest and maybe do it next week because I think the prickly actually starts at five one next week again. It repeats five one and two, and then it runs into the rest of chapter five. Mm. Uh, so you could you get a chance to kind of hit it again and, and keep going if you want to do a two part series or whatever it is. Uh, it's it's an interesting way to do it, um, but otherwise, we hope that helps. We hope at least it gives you something to think about, or at least you know something to laugh at or something. <laughs> uh, like, subscribe, uh, check out fifteen seventeen, check out Craft of Preaching. Really great articles on this as well. Uh, in there. And in the meantime, God bless your preaching.